Sniper. This keen folk is one of the most infamous heroes in Dota 2, and for a magnitude of reasons. With more than 625 million games played at the time of writing this, he stands tall, mostly, with the game's most iconic and recognizable heroes. And believe it or not, he actually holds the title of the most picked hero in Herald, and one of the least picked heroes in Divine and Up with a piss poor win rate to match. But no matter what it is, whether it be how you feel about him, the current state of him, his stats, who you are, your MMR, even your current opinion on the game. It's a fact that in one way or another, Sniper definitely holds a special place in everyone's heart. But I wouldn't be making this video if there wasn't something wrong with him, and how very fortunate for you and everyone, there is definitely something wrong. Not only is Sniper not good, He's stale and way too easy to counter. It's becoming more apparent that sniper players in the lower end of skill brackets possess little to no genuine impact or carry potential. And it's not just playing him, it's playing with him and against him. 95% of the time it feels like I'm playing with bots when I see a sniper player. Or even when I pick sniper. I hate this hero. Because it's not very hard to ruin Sniper's day. Spirit Breaker can ruin his day, Spectre can ruin his day, Dazzle can ruin his day, Anti-Mage can ruin his day, Pudge can ruin his day. Almost anyone can ruin this stationary turret's day. Because humans have evolved alongside the meta and the game's mechanics, so we know how to ruin his day. At the same time, God himself has given Sniper what he needs to stop this from happening. Yet humanity refuses these gracious gifts and opt for the default A-click and let go of the keyboard playstyle. It's gotten to the point where I've been seeing this way too much, and it's prompted me to help you stop this crippling addiction of repetition. Today I've created a build for Sniper that tries to take advantage of every aspect in his kit in order to allow for maximum impact, teamwork, and enjoyment, designed specifically for players in and around the Archon to Ancient skill brackets. Reason for this is because this skill bracket is essentially Blight Town. And you already know how it is in Blight Town. It can either be a smooth and satisfying uphill battle, or sadness. But, so far, judging by my current results, everyone in Blight Town never saw it coming. It's a homegrown build, forged and formulated with my own imaginary iteration of the meta, with little to no input from others and no return from my investments into the Somali Pirate Stock Exchange. So this video is on the house, my friends. Enjoy. The old boomers commenting on every Facebook post were right all along. Your MSGs, GMOs, LOLs are rotting your frontal cortex, sizzling away the potential for creative thinking, turning you into not only a terrible Dota player, but a wage cuck too. But with this guide, we can turn that around and turn your sniper gameplay into something a little bit more meaningful and impactful in the grand scheme of things. As for your employment predicament, I understand. We all need to get bread somehow. Now, what I am referring to when I mention being impactful, is being able to provide more than just damage for 90% of the game. That was the ultimate goal in mind when creating this build. The build itself is a mixture of utility, crowd control, damage, and mobility, with not too much of anything but balancing the right amount to ensure our impact as a mid laner. I feel like mid laners need to be able to do a lot more than just be a second carry, which is something that mid sniper tends to be 100% of the time. Now let's begin. As we talk about the build, I'll explain what purpose some items will be serving so you can get an idea of how it should be utilized. Yeah, what? Now at the beginning of the game, we'll start with the basics. Tangos, Quelling Blade, Fairy Fire, Sentry, Observer, and Fill with Branches. Once we get into the game, queue up a bottle and brown boots, and it's time to strut down to your juicy solo lane. For our laning stage skill build, we're going to play it out safe and simple. We'll start with Shrapnel and max disability out first while grabbing a value point in both W and E and taking the ultimate at level 6. Now the reason we max Shrapnel early is because it's unironically the best ability on Sniper in the early to mid game. We'll use it to dominate the lane by zoning your enemy, chase your enemy, gank at the lane, jungle, farm, and push, its usage is extremely versatile, thanks to its AoE and cast range. This thing alongside your take aim are going to be your best friends throughout the early game because Sniper is a little weakling. He has 285 movement speed and fuck all of anything else. He's literally a soccer ball with feet, just waiting to be penalty kicked at any given time by any competent player or brainless strength core. Inshallah. <laughs> So remember, these two skills are going to be the answer for that. By utilizing Shrapnel effectively, you should be quite dominant in the lane, or still be able to put up a fight if the odds are against you. At the end of the day, your time in the lane is all dependent on who you're up against, but for the sake of the build, let's just say that we're having a good time. Like I literally just mentioned seconds ago, Sniper has a very large presence, and you need to take advantage of it to win your lane. But there's some extra details we need to discuss so we can be 100% sure that we do win the lane. One of the best ways to dominate the laning stage alongside your pristine ability usage is to grab more wards. When you're about to bring your bottle or boots to yourself, grab another observer and sentry if you can afford to, and put it overlooking the rune you don't have vision over on your high ground or the enemies. 
doing this will keep you much safer in the lane because every player under Ancient in the OCE region thinks smoke up means time for a cone. And of course you'll be able to keep vision over the runes. Taking control of the runes is imperative to dominance in the mid lane and extremely advantageous for when you want to roam and gank another lane. Which brings me to my next point. Make sure you inform your team to clearly communicate if they need help immediately. If they're getting gone on, are expecting a battle, or if the mid laner is attempting a gank on them. We need to keep an eye on our side lane buddies the first 15 minutes of the game and be ready to take a nice scenic walk through the river or smash that T hotkey. Even though this hero is asking to get kicked in the face when he leaves his lane, even with no actual items, you will still win the majority of the early game engagements you find yourselves in, so long as you're showing up to a lane that has an allied hero in it that isn't scared to click buttons on his keyboard. The reason you win the majority of the engagements is because of presence. Sniper's presence is so large that we have an advantage in a large majority of early game engagements. I can't stress it enough, take advantage of it. Even though our right clicks aren't super deadly, we still have headshot to partially make up for it and we have passive range provided by take aim. And don't forget your second strongest ability that has three charges of an AOE DOT and slow with a 10 second duration. And if you're roaming past level 6, assassinate a fucking 320 damage nuke with a 3000 cast range. So long as you're fighting with your team in that lane and know how to position yourself properly so you don't get caught up by something stupid, then you will win 78% of the time. So keep that bottle handy. After you obtain brown boots and bottle, buy phase boots. After that, you're gonna farm for a diffusal blade into an agnum shard and an agnum scepter. Well, stop, stop, stop. Let me just get this right again. Either that or I'm just about to be punked. Phase boots, diffusal blades, agnum shard, and agnum scepter. Do you smoke? You got no respect. No, I'm 100% serious. And no, this is not support sniper with extra steps. All right, let's start from the top. Diffusal Blade. The best way I can describe this item's place in this build is like a budget desolator. With Diffusal Blade, you get 15 agility, that's 15 damage and attack speed. 10 intelligence, that's equal to 120 mana and its passive provides 40 damage for every 40 mana you burn. That's 55 damage. You are getting five more damage than Desolator along with extra attack speed and mana, along with another way to hinder the enemy during fights and flee from anyone in kicking range. And you only have to spend 70% of what you'd spend on a desolator. Basically, you're trading armor reduction for mana burn, stats, and a niche way to escape enemies. Considering Sniper's incredible attack range, that's a pretty fair trade in my legend scrub eyes. This is a perfect package that turns Sniper into a genuinely intolerable nuisance during fights. Health and mana are obviously the game's most vital resources, and being able to affect them both from a distance they can't reach quickly enough is a factor that's quite hard to manage in a teamfight. Next item. Aghanim Scepter. This baby is my pride and joy of core sniper. Scepter makes our ultimate objectively better in every single way, turning it into a very powerful and overlooked crowd control ability. Aghanim Scepter makes assassinate fire quicker and turns the mini stun into a 1.5 second stun. Combined with its cast range, 700 damage and 10 second cooldown at last level, there's literally no reason not to pick up this item. This item can start fights, end fights, prolong fights, save your life and even your team. Now my second favourite item on Sniper, Agnum's Shard. This is one of the best things I've ever used on Sniper and it's only 1400 gold. Agnum's Shard grants Sniper a new AoE ability, Concussive Grenade. Concussive Grenade disarms and slows anyone coordinate for 3 seconds as well as locking them back, causing channels, casts and force horizontal movement to be interrupted. It will always knock Sniper back the opposite direction of where they casted the ability, which means you also now have mobility. You can traverse elevations, break through trees, and be more slippery, allowing you to escape, be annoying, catch up to the team, or even just get in range to cast your ultimate. Congratulations, you now have two ways to interrupt enemy heroes and be useful during teamfights, and actual ways to avoid death from five enemy heroes coming towards you. Seriously, if you play Sniper, you need to start using these more. After that, we're picking up four staff into Hurricane Pike for more mobility and utility for the team. Team. By building like this, I found myself to be in more favorable engagements and outcomes because I'm upgrading what else my hero is capable of doing, rather than just how much damage I can output and essentially have more methods to answer the many flaws, weaknesses and even counters that could be present throughout a game as Sniper. When playing a Sniper, you usually only have one option when a hero gets on top of you and Hurricane Pike isn't enough. That being, try to kill them before they kill you. Against heroes that have the ability or potential to get on top of you, like Spectre, Magnus or Monkey King for example, the odds of survival become much more even. 
the playing field is balanced and you actually have more time and choices on where or what your next move will be rather than can I kill him before he kills me? Do you take advantage of your predicament and make space for your team for an objective? Do you keep them occupied till your team arrives? Or do you eventually whittle down their health? Your options are much more expanded compared to the usual scenario of life and death. And despite how complicated I try to make this build sound, it really isn't. It's just a very simple build that gives you more incentive to actually make use of your keyboard effectively. You'll still be able to siege towers really well. You'll still have decent physical damage against heroes, believe it or not, great magical damage and crowd control. Now back to the game. At this point, you've won your lane, you've assisted your team and hopefully helped them secure their laning stage. And all in all, you've left your mark on the current results in the match. Now your goal is to start working with your team to win the game and yeah it actually is that simple. Keep in mind the way you position yourself and put yourself in engagements will more or less remain the same as any other sniper build, except you'll be in the driver's seat this time. You'll be the one deciding who gets to eat a 50 cal, who wants to get bounced around by concussion grenades, and who wants to waste their time chasing the midget who hops around like Foon in the CSS days while their team gets slaughtered. Now that you've got all your core items up, you can start looking at situational and extension items to assist in your victory. Instead of wasting your time and turning this into a 30 minute video, I'll quickly list off my favorites and you can have a quick look yourself with the link to the guide down below. My usual favorites are Gleipnir for its utility and Maelstrom passive, or if the team is really lacking in damage, Mjolnir. Then if the game calls for more shrapnel and assassinate spam, Octarine Core. Swiftlink for mobility and damage, and last but not least, Bloodthorn. Right before we get into the last topic of this video, the talent tree. Starting at level 10, you'll take headshot damage, 14% shrapnel slow at level 15, shrapnel DPS at level 20, then plus 6 shrapnel charges at level 25. I'm going to round this build off with a quick tip that I recommend every mid sniper player to utilize. Remember the mid lane small camp? Both fortunately and unfortunately, heroes who have potential to flash farm or farm faster than most are at somewhat of a disadvantage in the mid lane now thanks to the removal of that camp. Even though Sniper isn't a Shadow Fiend or Kunker, he can still stack and farm the jungle while in the mid lane. Sniper is one of the only heroes that can do this. On the Radiant mid, you can shrapnel this camp closest to the mid lane to stack it or passively farm it with shrapnel's DPS. On the Dire side, you just need to cut these two trees or more if you want to stack even larger amounts, and you're good to go. Thanks to the way you're now pulling this Dire camp, you have potential to stack a lot of creeps in this camp, allowing for a decent gold lead in the early game. Be aware to actually pull the creeps, you need to be just a bit closer to aggro the jungle minions. Once you stack that camp enough times, you should have enough points in shrapnel to farm it all at once. You can either walk up to it and take it with right clicks and shrapnel to get the extra XP, or you can let shrapnel farm it for you while you farm the lane creeps. To do that, you have to position the shrapnel at max cast range, making sure all the creeps will get hit by it, and they will stay completely still, taking the full brunt of the damage and awarding you with a nice stream of gold while you continue in the lane. Now, thank you so much for sticking around to the end. I appreciate it. A lot. I really enjoy making dumb content about the game we all love, and if you enjoyed watching it, please leave a like and subscribe. It means a lot to me, and I'm going to be doing this for a long time now. As for any current regular viewers on the channel, I again apologize for the lack of content and gaps in between uploading. I'm still getting used to this, but I've decided I'm going full time with it. So you'll be able to see the ever-growing chaotic descent of my behavior score, which is somehow still yet to begin even after two years of playing every hero in the game with a Dagon. So expect more to come and even worse builds. Thank you and good night.